Job chapter 36, Elihu speaking to Job. Job and his three friends have left off speaking. Elihu speaks up and he speaks to right. Elihu also proceeded and said, Suffer me a little, and I will show thee that I will yet to speak on God's behalf. So, inspiration of God speaking through Elihu, where four men have been wrong. I will fetch my knowledge from afar, and I will ascribe righteousness to my maker, capital M. So Elihu is a creationist, not an evolutionist, giving God the credit. For truly my word shall not be false, as it's been with the three friends of Job. He that is perfect in knowledge is with thee. Behold, God is mighty. And we're going to pick up now. Elihu's thing now from verse 5 is how mighty God is and Job, you're not. Job has proclaimed that he is self-righteous. He is better than God. Look at all the great things that Job has done. And yet Job has forgotten that they've been done through God. When there's a healing and a man takes the credit for the healing, it's God that does the healing. When somebody prays for God for a bill or for money that is needed, and they give the credit to the person that sends it, it is God that sends it. Behold, God is mighty and despises not any. He is mighty in strength and wisdom, and it's all true. We serve a mighty God. Evolution serves a God. Well, where did this bone go? Where is this missing link? And yet God has nothing missing. He preserveth not the life of the wicked, but giveth right to the poor. Now Job has said before, I was an anchor to the, to the poor. I was a help to the poor. I was help to the widow. I helped them and took care of them. No, God is. He, God, withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous. And many people who are saved and love the Lord are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And we think, God, are you paying attention to me? Do you know what's going on with me? And he is. And it's not the time of God to answer or step in. But with kings... Are they on the throne? Yea, kings are on the throne. He does establish them forever and they are exalted. Poor people and kings. The two vast characteristics of the people that we're talking about now, the very poor and the very rich that sit on thrones and God's in charge of them all, Job. And those kings that do right and those poor that do right, God's watching them. Job, your knowledge of the poor is very limited, where God has all the poor in all the world. And there are nations that Job doesn't know about where there are rulers, and God knows about those rulers. So don't go boasting about how you help the poor, and you're known to the mighty and all that, because there are a whole bunch of people that don't know who you are, Job. And God's been taking care of them. There are people who have got such great pride and they're Christians, and yet there are people who don't even know who they are. And the people that don't know who you are, God may know them. He withdraws not his eyes from the righteous, but, the, but with kings are they on the throne. Yea, he does establish them forever, and they are exalted. And if they be bound in fetters, handcuffs, and are holding in cords of affliction, they suffer, almost like the life of Paul, then he, God, showeth them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. All right, Job, you gave comfort to a widow? There are people who are in handcuffs. There are people who are chained in a dungeon. There are people who have been penalized by God. You know what God does? He will show them their transgression. He will show them their work. 
And as we come to chapter 36 of Job, it has already been revealed by Job's own mouth, you're self-righteous. It took 36 chapters to do it. But God has explained to you, Job, why this has all happened. And we must ask God ourselves. It cannot be anybody else. And I've said this over and over and over. And this is something that, that I say and I do. I will ask God what my sins are. And I know what my sins are. I will ask God at that moment what is in the way of God in me by my sin. And God is so faithful to speak to me. Many people are afraid to do that. Because some sins they enjoy. They don't want to give up. And a lot of told Job, who has said, hey, look at, look at everything I've done. Yep, you know what the mighty God does? He will chastise you. And he will tell you what he's doing it for. And any parent who... who chastises a, ch a child the number one job you're to do when you're chastising that child is say this is your crime this is your sin they've got to know just don't go in there and whip the butt hey listen this is what i gotta do this is what the bible says it hurts me to do this but you've done wrong and here's your wrong And when a preacher gets up in a pulpit and preaches a message and whoever it, that message is being directed to, whatever the Holy Spirit is speaking, they're telling that person that's sitting in that pew, you're in trouble. That's a holy and righteous God. A preacher can't do that. A preacher don't know what your life is. But if God uses that preacher and that preacher is able to be used by God. God said, hey, this is the problem. Pay attention. This is the problem you and I have. And many times in a public ministry, when we're preaching Jesus and we're preaching the gospel, they get mad at us because they want whatever they want to get to heaven. They don't want God's way. And God uses the mouth of a preacher. This is the way. He, God, opens also their ear to discipline. Again, showing them, why are you being corrected? And commanded that they return from their iniquity, repent. There's repent. Repent is not taught in the modern churches today, and there it is. God wants you to turn. God wants you to repent. God wants you to acknowledge. Adam, where art thou? Well, I'm hiding. Well, Adam, why are you hiding? Because of her. No, no, that's not the answer, Adam. I want you to come out and tell me what you did. And Adam and Eve never told him. They never repented. Adam should went up to God and said, I, I ate that fruit I wasn't supposed to. Eve should have said, hey, I looked at that fruit. It was desired in my eyes. It, it enlightened me. It made me feel so great. And I ate it. But they didn't do that. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. That's important. If they obey and serve him, God, they shall... Then, uh, they shall spend their days in prosperity. Oh, isn't that great? Look, look at that. But we're not looking at the gospel of Jesus Christ. There has been no Calvary. There has been no laying of the tomb of the dead body of Jesus. There is no coming out of the tomb. There is no angel proclaiming that he is not here. He's risen. Paul says, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And yet they'll take verses like this and take out of context. You know, if your life is not prosperity, you're living wrong. With God. That's a lie. You tell me one of the, the 11 apostles with Judas gone. You tell me one of those 11 apostles that lived on high and had great riches and everything. Tell me one of them. And show me the biblical proof. If the apostles didn't get the prosperity, and if all the people in the time of Nero suffered persecution and were killed by Nero, various counts of the ways, and then when you get to the church history that Christians died for the word of God, Christians were killed by the Catholic Church for the word of God, Christians have been persecuted, Christians are being persecuted today under the Catholic Church, they're being persecuted under Islam. Are you going to tell me that those that love the Lord 
in the third world nations that because they don't have the prosperity, they're not saved? You're a fool. There are people in India today who are saved and are ostracized from their family because they won't worship the Kadhuin gods. There are people who have left or been, been taken out of an Islam family because they have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and they're just living in complete poverty because there's nothing else for them to do. And because they don't have the riches of being in their nation anymore. you going to tell me because they don't have prosperity, they're not saved? Absolutely not. Throughout the book of Acts, you know what happens to a Jew when they got saved? In the book of Acts, their family disowned them. They would have a mock funeral. You're dead if you believe in Jesus. And when they sold their property in the book of Acts, they put it into a pile and they would use that money to help the Jews that had no more home, no more job, and no more relations in Israel. Are you going to tell me the prosperity works for them? Prosperity doesn't get you anywhere after you die. Whether you're saved or you're lost, you don't take your money to glory, you don't take your money to hell. For a Christian, only, only glory he gets to take to heaven when he dies is all the souls that he has part in them getting saved. That's it. And you know what they'll teach the prosperity in churches today when you, you know you get prosperity and then go ahead and tithe. You know the Mormon church will give you documents that you have to you have to certify, I have been told, your IRS forms, and then they will tell you how much you have to give to the church, I am told. You have to prove your income, I am told, to the to the Mormon church, and then they will tell you how much you owe the church. That's ridiculous. Prosperity, one old woman come up into the treasury, she threw two farthings in there, and Jesus said she gave much more. Now she's broke. Where's her prosperity? She go home with no money that day. Jesus said she gave it all, right? What are you going to do with prosperity here? Paul lived amongst prisoners all most of his life. Prosperity. And their ears be pleasured. My, my life as a Christian is pleasurable. And I don't mean in the worldly pleasure. I mean God's giving me love, joy, peace, long-suffering, working on patience. But I am happy I'm a Christian. I'm sick and tired of the world. I'm going through right things right now. Man is not giving me love. Man is not giving me joy. Man is not helping our health needs right now. But God is able and Christians are praying for us. And God is lifting us up. Thank you, Lord, for serving you. To the man, let them take their money and go in the grave. Serving God is pleasure. When we come home on a ministry, doing any public ministry, man, we are laughing, enjoying, having a great time, talking about the great time we have serving with the Lord. You can't do that. You can't do that. Have pleasure in the world. But if they obey not, there's my voice, they shall perish by sword, which would be war, and they shall die without knowledge. Knowledge of what? Jesus Christ. Today, if they don't obey God and repenting and getting right and churning from their iniquity, God will not reveal to them what their trouble is. Since April 21st, 1987, I have been saved. And there have been sins in my life, reading the Bible and praying to God. God had shown me sins I didn't even know I was doing. And the more I read the Bible, the more I study the Bible, the more I hear Bible preaching. Man, I'm in the Bible. I'm in my, my church today. and I'm listening to the preacher. And I'm getting a prayer session with God. God, I didn't know I was sinning. God, I know about that sin. And I'm sorry. That's a loving God say, let me tell you what's wrong with you, son. The devil don't tell you that. The devil tells you, fine, it's wonderful, it's great. Keep on doing it. And then die and go to hell. Or for a Christian, the devil's like, keep enjoy, enjoy yourself. Go for the gusto. Go for the world. Yay! And then you die and you end up judging the speed of Christ. You end up wood, hay, or stubble, and nothing to claim for it. <coughs> but the hypocrites in heart, in the heart, in the heart, heap up wrath. That's from God. And they cry not when he bindeth them. There's the binding. When God puts you between the rock and the hard place, 
If God has done that and you are not listening to God, you're in big trouble. Now, if God, if you're saved and God, you know, he said, come into the bed with me. And God's got that rod and he said, pull down them pants. He says, listen, I love you. And this is what you've done wrong. And you're willing to repent and get right with God. It's going to be, I mean, it's going to hurt. But it's going to help. First to help, then to, to help him. Not if you're a hypocrite. Not if you're not listening. Not if you're rebelling. They die in youth. And their life is among the unclean. So what are some people who die young? Because they won't listen to God. Sometimes God will take a sometimes God will take a young life because God knows and foresees that life. And if I take him now, this is the only chance he's going to heaven. Or this guy's living wickedly. And if I don't take him now, man, he's gonna have much, 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 much more. When Paul told the Corinthian church about that man who was sleeping with his father's wife. Turn him over to the devil. Let the devil rake him over the clothes. Let the devil take his life because it's only going to get worse. You know what that guy did? He got, he repented. He got right. He got back in the church. He got back in a fellowship. He delivered the poor in affliction. Job already said he did that. Elihu says God has done it, Job, and God has used you, Job. Let's say I give $10 to somebody who, who needs a meal. That's not my $10. That's $10 that God's given me. And you know what? He's probably giving me more than $10. I'm taking what God's given me to help someone else. It's not me. He opens their ears in oppression. You know why he opens? Because he wants them to listen. He wants them to get right. He wants them to hear what God has to say. And it's always not God speaking. He can use a man. He can use a preacher. He can use a street preacher. He can use a co-worker that's a Christian. He can use your mom and dad. He can use your boss. I was saved and had unsaved people speaking to me when I was living carnally in the world. We got to be ready to hear from the Lord. But some people want the Lord to come down and speak to them. That ain't going to happen. Even so, would he, God, have removed thee out of the strait into a broad place, a very tight place, into a broad place, wide open, where there is no straightness, no narrow path, where there is no straightness, and that which should be set on the table should be full of fat. And I'll give you everything you want. But you, you know, it won't be so straight. Broad is the way that Jesus says leads to destruction. You know what a lot of riches will do? Jesus said it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle. An eye of a literal sewing needle than a rich man to get in heaven. Some riches will prevent you from getting right with God. Being fat and full. And the guy said, hey, I'm going to tear everything down. I'm going to build all kinds of barns. I'm going to sit back and sow, eat, drink, and be merry. And God says, thou fool, tonight you're, you're going to die and your soul is going to be accounted for. You know what Elihu's telling Job? You just lost everything. You just lost your children. You are in medical condition because God got your attention. You were going the wrong way with all that wealth. I've had to start my life all over again. And you may have to too. It may be God saying, hey, you didn't do so good. You know what? Let's try this again. Now this time, will you pray to me? This time, will you shut up and listen to me? You don't, and you know, God speak, you, you don't want to go through this a third time, do you? <laughs> nope. <laughs> You know the you know the, the thing I've learned early on as a Christian. I, I forget to say. You can walk away from God, and I did. I walked away from God. You know where you know where He'll bring you right back to where you left Him. God brought me right back where I was. And you know what the problem was? 
It wasn't God. He was waiting right. God did not go with me. But you come back with a lot of baggage to carry. You come back with a lot of baggage. God said, you know, sometimes when God takes it away from you, it's because it's no good for you. I had my son one time, I, I, I used to use, when I, when I shaved, I used to use those, those double-edged razors in my razor. My son had that one time. He's walking around with, I went and grabbed it. It ain't, that was not healthy for him. Man, when you get, when you just prick yourself with that razor, you're going to bleed. It's, it could be deadly. Get that away from you. You don't want that. And God does that. You know, first time you take that drink of liquor, and first time you take that smoke, I remember what my body did. It refuses it. It got sick. It got, oh, gross. You know, God's saying that's your body saying you don't need that. Paul did not have prosperity. Paul did not have a broad way. Jesus warned us about the broad way. Now, there are Christians out there who had the broad way. They have the money, like J.C. Penney, and yet they used it for the glory of God. You know why you don't have it? Because you won't use it for the glory of God. I know why God won't give me riches, because I'll waste it and blow it. Verse 17, But thou hast thou, talking to Job, Thou hast filled the judgment of the wicked. You have fulfilled the judgment. I, I helped the widow. I helped the fatherless. But you also helped the wicked, Job. Judgment and justice take hold of thee, Job. You're a judge. You're supposed to do right. Okay, yeah, you helped the widows. Yeah, you helped the father. But you also helped the wicked, Job. You're not like God, Job. You don't know all the answers God does. I would not ever, I thank God God never called me to be a judge. You know how hard it is to be to, to rightly divide between two people and say, he did it, no, he did it. And I'm telling the truth, Your Honor. Your Honor, I'm telling the truth. Your Honor, he's lying. No, Your Honor, he's lying. You know, that's a hard job without God. Especially in this day and age. Job says, look how good I did. Elihu says, you better, you know, you missed some steps there that God says you missed. You didn't do so good, Job. All have sinned, come short of the glory of God. Because there is wrath. Beware, lest he, God, take thee away with his stroke. If Job doesn't get right, Elihu says, you're going with a stroke. That's what God told uh, uh, Mm. A lot, uh, no, uh, Ezekiel's wife. Now, Ezekiel didn't do wrong, but God told Ezekiel, I'm going to show you as a, as a witness to Israel. I'm going to show you type of, I'm going to take your wife with a stroke. Did you know that a stroke is in the Bible? And like you just showed Job, if you don't get correct, your next step is, is beyond those boils. You're going to die, brother. God's going to take your life. Elihu's telling Job, you're not right. You're not correct. God is greater than you. God has been using you. And man, you need to repent. Verse 10. If you don't. If you don't. Take thee with a stroke. Then a great ransom cannot deliver thee. In the Old Testament. Job would have died in his sins and gone to hell no matter what. Job would have been, Job said, I will see God. Elihu says, if you die with that stroke right now, you're not right with God and you're going to go down. We are in the Old Testament. We are even before the law. There is no Christ. There is no Calvary. There is no empty tomb. It is salvation by works in the Old Testament. Job is not correct with God. When you died in the Old Testament, not correct with God, there was nothing that could save your soul. Now Elihu is not now, Job's friends had told him, you're going to hell because you're a wicked man. Elihu says, listen, if you don't get correct, you don't repent, God's going to take your life, and there'll be no ransom. Elihu gives him the warning. When I preach on the streets, not only do I give them hell, but I give them heaven. Not only do I give them torments of hell, but I give them what the glories of God in New Jerusalem are. 
So it's gotten serious now with Joe. Now, my great ransom, if I were to die in my sins today, if, if I had to be caught in a, in a wicked, vile sin and die, I'll still be absent and present with the Lord. I can't lose my soul on this side of Calvary. Now, I will lose rewards, but I can't lose my soul. You can't say that in the time of Job. Will he, God, esteem thy riches? Will God count all the money you have? No. No. Not gold. Not all the forces of strength. Job, get a military. You ain't going to change God. One angel of the Lord destroyed a whole military force. The angel of the Lord with David began destroying Israel up to Jerusalem. And there was nothing that could stop but David praying to the Lord. Desire not the night. When the people are cut off in their place. Death. Death. Take heed. Regard not iniquity. You better repent. You better get away from that sin, Job. For this hast thou chosen rather than affliction. You have delighted. You have chosen your sin. You have chosen to live in your self-righteousness, Job. Behold, God exalteth. By his power. And who teaches like him? No one. You know if your preacher does great messages. It's not him. It's the Holy Spirit. My preacher right now. He has great messages. But it ain't him. And he will tell you it's not him. He will tell you it's the Holy Spirit working through him. Thank God. Praise God. Glory to God. That he has yielded himself for the Holy Spirit. I know preachers who are prideful and wonderful and great. They can't do nothing for you. Who has enjoined him, God, his way? And who can say, thou hast wrought iniquity? Can you ever tell God he sinned? And yet people do it all the time. God, why'd you do that? God, why'd you kill that? God, why won't you stop? You're accusing God of iniquity. And that's exactly what Job and his three friends have been doing. Everyone does it. Remember, remember that thou magnify his work, which men behold. Job has been lifting himself up. He should have been saying, by the glory of God, that he set me in this position that I am, that I can pray to God and seek God and say, God, who is wrong here and who is right? What is the proper injustice of you that is holy, God, that I can help these people in front of me? Every man may see it. Man behold, man, yeah, man behold it afar off. The work of God. There are people who look at you and say, you know what? Whatever it is, it's got to be God who's working in you. We've had doctors say it with my wife. I just, we don't know. A couple weeks ago, my, my wife had a, 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 a clot in her heart and it's gone. We don't understand. We'll keep putting, you know, uh, you know, blood thinner, but it's not there. You know why it's not there? Because God answered prayer. And they took gospel tracts and they listened to the testimony of God. Behold, here we go. God is great. Isn't that just enough right there? God is great. And we know him not. Neither can the number of his years be searched out. Tell me how, how old God Happy birthday to you. You can't do that for God. There are not enough candles for God's birthday because he was never been born. God has always been. Always. God has been eternity present, I mean past, and eternity future. There's no numbers of his years. For he maketh, God maketh small the drops of water. You like weather? You like rain? You like dew? You like thunderstorms? God done it. Not the weather, man. Don't you praise a weather, man. 
They pour down rain according to the vapor thereof, which the clouds do drop and distill upon man abundantly. You know how long it took man to realize the clouds, you know, the evaporation cycle? But did you know that when the rain goes up to the clouds, it has been distilled? Uh, 1520 BC, they knew that. Those dumb, ignorant people in the Old Testament time, they didn't know nothing. Elihu knew that when rain evaporates, goes back to, to the cloud, it's been distilled. You want to drink salt water? You put salt water in a canister, you let evaporation happen, you collect the rain, and the salt will remain in the, in the, in the canister, but the rain can be collected for pureness and clearness and good. Also, can any understand the spreadings of the clouds? I don't know. What are clouds made of? They say water vapor. Is that what God says? I have a feeling we're going to get the glory one day, and God's going to say, we're going to have a little lesson about what man thought it was, and I'll tell you how easy it was. <laughs> you know, they say gravity. Explain to me gravity when the rapture happens. A dead body in the ground, a dead body at the Titanic, dead body who's been blown up into a billion bouts of pieces from a nuclear bomb is all going to come back together and go to the clouds. That'd be funny. You guys want to know what gravity really is? Yeah, Lord, what is it? My hand holding you down. You think you're so prideful? I, I kept your head out of the clouds because I held you down. And when I said, blow that trumpet, I just took my hand and said, oh, well, not you. Yep, you. Nope, not you. Yep, you. Not you. Yep, nope, not you. Not you. I can do it all in that one thing. <laughs> Come on, think about the rapture. A saved man in combat gets blown up by artillery fire, and God's going to put all those pieces together. Somewhere, I don't know where my toe is, and God says, all right, get that toe back over here and put it back on his foot. You think God's going to, oh, yeah, he's going to do that. The rapture will defy gravity. Isn't that interesting? Can any understand the, the, the spreadings of the cloud? You ever just watch the clouds go by? They're beautiful, and wonderful, and great. Colorful and great kinds of shapes. But do you really know what they are? No. Or the noise of his tabernacle. Now I'm going to assume that's thunder. Because you've been talking about weather. Can you really tell me what thunder is? They say it's the sound and all that. What if God just said, I was speaking, you guys just didn't understand me? What did Paul say? When he on the road to Damascus, he's flattened down the ground, he heard this voice, and the people with him didn't hear him. Did they not, in Jesus' time, they said that uh, Jesus said an angel spoke to him, like something spoke to him. They didn't understand. Every time I hear a thunderstorm, I always give it to God. Because the Bible says he thundereth. And one of the days, those thundering clouds are going to say, Stiley, come up hither. You're ridiculous. No, I'm not. That's faith. One of these days, those, I don't know if the world's going to hear, but can you imagine the world hears a thunderstorm and starts calling out names? Tracy! Stiley! Rachel! Who's that? Where is he? Where'd he go? I don't know. That's I believe that. I believe trees are going to clap one day. The Bible says so. Behold, he spreadeth his light upon it, the clouds, and covereth the bottom of the sea. God knew where the Titanic was the whole time until they found it. God knows every soul that was saved or lost where the Titanic is today. They found a pair of boots. When you look at the picture, there's a pair of boots right there. and it, 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 Just where the body lay. God knows who was in those boots. God knows where Jimmy Hoffa is today. And I'm not talking about where his body is. God knows if he's in heaven or in hell. There's no unsolved mysteries with God. For by them, the clouds and the rain, for by them, that's what the subject men, judges he the people. Now that's far, I, I don't know what the clouds have to do. Maybe they're watching us. You know, we look, oh, a bunny rabbit. Oh, a whale. And they're looking at, oh, a sinner. <laughs> oh, look what that guy's doing. I don't know. He giveth meat in abundance. 
I'll show you my I'll show you my kitchen. My kitchen is loaded with food. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He gives a lot of meat and, and food to the people in India. They just call it gods and won't eat it. With clouds again. By the way, you know he comes with clouds. You know Jesus went up in Acts chapter 1 in the cloud. There's something about clouds. There was a cloud that led, that led Israel by day to the promised land. With clouds he covereth the light. And commands it not to shine by the cloud that cometh between. I love on the cloudy days when I preach because that sun's not burning on me. The noise thereof showeth concerning it. The cattle are concern, are concerning the vapor. I'm out of grounds. I have no idea. I'm not that much into cows. So no. But Elihu said, Job, yes, God is so much greater than you. There's even stuff in this chapter I can't even explain. God knows. God knows. I don't have all the answers. 